So I just want to welcome everyone to the call. So um, today we've got an interview with Margie. And um, just before we get started, I just want to elaborate the purpose of Avatar Uncovered. So our purpose is to bring truth to the surface and highlight the abuses, violations and practices of Avatar and the Stars Edge Network. Um, it isn't to harm, libel or cause any harm with anyone. And also I just want to elaborate that this is Expos, it's not just my personal experience or my Expos, it's based on purely on, um, it's based on a wealth of information, investigations, other people's experiences and those that are beginning to step forward and have genuine concerns um, for those that have left, like loved ones, and those that are still caught up within the network, and also to protect others that may be considering doing Avatar, and also entering other destructive cults as well, and what kind of techniques and processes they use. <coughs> so, um, I'd just like to say we represent all ex-Avatar masters and ex scientologists who feel they've been harmed and deceived and exploited since the 1970s, and we provide education and support for current Avatar masters who may be questioning and leaving, and again for those that may be considering the Avatar course. And we provide a platform to help friends, family and loved ones who have someone caught up and we can refer them to people that um, are experts in this area because I'm not an expert, but we have great people that <coughs> refer to that can give you coping techniques or, um, you know, interventions if it's necessary. And um, again, providing cult education and bringing um, the whole issue of cults to, to, to the surface because they're creating such a huge destruction um, worldwide. So today I want to welcome Margie to the call, um, who is our first ever interviewee at Avatar Uncovered. So a bit more- I'm the first, huh? Maybe no, you cool. are the first, Margie. Okay. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> So a bit more about Margie. So 12 years, Margie was a model Scientologist. She was a teacher, a recruiter, and a third in command for a period of time at Harry Palmer's Center for Creative Learning in Amira. I always say that wrong, Amira. For me, uh -huh. Amira mission of the Church of Scientology. So she was also one of the first ever supporters, trainers, and recruiters for Avatar, and a devoted follower of Harry and Avra. So welcome to the call, Margie. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to say too that, you know, I'm not speaking to uh, tell embarrassing stories about Harry and Abra or to embarrass them or uh, to, to uh, disclose secrets. I certainly have a lot to tell. But my purpose really is, is to let people who are considering to do Avatar know how it was born and and what happened in Elmira people should know yeah wonderful. so yeah so that's that's my that's my purpose and speaking out yeah so. absolutely and, and the same from our perspective as well like we say is about bringing that truth to the surface and uh, <clears throat> right really what has been presented like the facade um, and I, I want to really again thank you for taking the time because I know how difficult it is and how difficult it is to um, go back into the past as well because we all want to kind of forget a lot of this I know we say that we had some great times too but they're also uh, yeah. Times and exiting a cult is hard enough anyway, and then recovery can take years. And it's <coughs> don't yes. really want to have to think about it again. So. It, it is bringing up a lot of things, but this is kind of good timing because I didn't finish watching Leah Remini's things, but I started watching them. It was like, oh my gosh. So, um, you know, yeah, and, the, it, and even though. Um, uh, Avatar is under a different name. I think that it's being run very similar to how things were run at Scientology. Absolutely. I think. So, yeah. Uh, and, and the same here, you know, I didn't realize any, oh, I didn't know at all. I wouldn't have done it. Not that I, um, not that I hate Scientology for the philosophy, but we're fully aware now of the exploitation and the harm and the abuses that are coming out of Scientology and the whole mental processing and how internalized. So I think it's brought a lot to the surface there and helps those spin-off cults as well, which I think there's a range of about 300 of them that's 
<laughs> have spun off from Scientology and helped give those people the confidence to have a voice and also a realisation of the practices that are being run because now there's nowhere to hide. We're beginning to see a lot of the same techniques and, like you say, the organisational scale and the way things are run. So she's done a fantastic job and also a lot of others that are speaking up about Scientology have learnt so much. So yeah. So should we get started into a bit more of how you got started? So how did you get started sure. with Scientology? Um, <clears throat> it's a long story, but I'll make it very short. And, and that <laughs> is that I was very vulnerable. I had a boyfriend that was killed in a car accident. And, um, you know, in Scientology, they do a lot of recruiting for, you know, they ask students who are there to bring in their friends. And so somebody brought me in and I was really looking because I was devastated about it was, you know, I think I was 19 when he died. And I think it was, tw I was 20 or 21 when I got into uh, Scientology, into the Elmira mission. So I was vulnerable. I was looking for something. And how did you find it at the beginning? I mean, what, what kind of drew you in? What pulled you in? What, what attracted you to? Well, um, that's a good question. Um, uh, I think other avatar people that have been speaking up recently have been calling it love bombs. Yeah. That they go in and they get a love bomb, you know? And um, I think that's what happened with me. I was love bombed. Yeah. And I will say I did learn how to throw love bombs, too, you know, because I became <laughs> registrar later on and I had to have that skill to get money out of people. Yeah. But, you, yeah. It, you see, don't you, begin to take on what you see and what is expected of you before you know it, you're doing something similar. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's how I... Um, I, I stayed, even though, you know, I would do some research and I would find, you know, I read like there was a big expose in the Reader's Digest here in the in the 70s. But I just I didn't pay attention because it was it became they were my friends. They were my family. There was a community. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I think all of us are really looking for a community, a, a, a really strong sense of belonging. And yeah. so I think that that's how I stayed. Yeah. So everyone became your friends and then you had that kind of commitment to. Correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, did you find that it helped you at the beginning? Because what was really be interesting is there'd be people watching this call that um, are interested in why people get involved in cults in the first place and how they stay, which you've just touched on briefly, but did you find like, you know, some of the other stuff in Scientology did help you or was it more the group? There, well, I think it's, a, you know, it's never one thing. And, and, and one thing, Scientology isn't all completely, totally bad. It's mostly bad, but nothing is completely bad. I guess the, 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 um, yeah, you know, the teachings, there's some, you know, there's some good stuff in it, but it's how it's run that uh, got, I think, uh, that aberrated everything. So um, it's people's intentions uh, who are who are leading it that I think cause cause bad juju. Yeah. Okay. So um, you later on became a staff member. So you moved from, you call it public Scientologists, don't you? Scientology yeah. <clears throat> so tell us about more about that, like what attracted you to become a staff member um, and that, that transition and what was involved? Well, um, the big thing was in Scientology that the purpose was to clear the planet, meaning to make the planet sane, bring everyone, uh, you know, the whole world, you bring sanity to it. And that's a pretty lofty goal. And I think it's a goal that all human beings share. They want to be helpful yeah. in the world and to people. So that's what got me. I wanted, I wanted to be able to do that. And so what it meant for me was I had to keep a, a part-time job in the mornings, but I worked at Scientology from one in the afternoon until 10 at night, sometimes much, much later than that. Um, I had, to, you know, we were only paid $75 a week, so I had to have another job to pay off all the loans that I had prepaid all the courses that I had paid for. 
So um, it made me a very tired girl. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. how much money were you spending even at that time towards the beginning, like roughly, was it into the well, Oh gosh, you know, people ask me that now and I have no idea how much I spent. I, I mean, it's, it's thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. You yeah. know, some people spend a heck of a lot more than I did. You know, when you're a staff member, you get your training for free. The problem is, is that, the problem was, I should say, is that we worked so hard, we often didn't get our training. So, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about your role and um, what was your role? <clears throat> My role was uh, as a registrar mm -hmm. and um, that is the person who sells people their courses and it's basically to get money. So it, and it is if somebody had three three courses paid for in advance if they hadn't been asked for money for a while, then it would be my job to sit them down and co coerce them. I want to say coerce, uh, convince them to go get more money and prepay oh, for, for other courses. So everything hmm? was prepaid where you were. You, you actually oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything was prepaid. Yeah. yeah. Everything was. Yeah. 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 There was uh, my job was to keep the money rolling in. Okay. Yeah. And so um, getting a bit more into, so obviously you um, were very close to Harry and Avara um, and they were running this mission at the time. Tell us a bit more about that. Um, when did you become, well, when did you become closer to them? I mean, you moved from public Scientology, being a public Scientologist into being a staff member. When did you find that relationship got closer and what was that experience like for you? Well, you know, anybody who is there, you, you're kind of, you know, brought into the circle. And um, I can't remember how it happened. All I know is that we were very close. I took her shopping. I was her confidant. She was mine. Uh, um, you, you know, uh, I knew that the, there was stuff going on. Uh, in the inner circle. I was in the inner circle, let me put it that way. Yeah. For a time, I do want to say, I want to preface this by saying for a time, because when I was no longer needed in my role, or actually what happened was somebody else came along who was fiercer than I was, and I was dismissed. I mean, you, people were disposed of if they were no longer needed. So, <clears throat> so that, did, that did happen. It happened in Avatar also, you know, at my exit, but that's, a, that's another story we'll, we'll talk about. So I was very close to them, and I considered them my very good friends. Their, the Avra was, was the godmother of my daughter, and, and uh, I left when my daughter was three, or close to three, and um, no, she was two. And, um, you know, they've never been in touch with my daughter or me. So yeah. I think one time we might have had a conversation. But no, I haven't heard from them at all. And we were really extremely close. I considered them my family. Okay. So just going back to that in a circle before we move on a bit more about that. Um, did you find that it was kind of a bit like a control mechanism and that you're being love bombed and brought in and then if you weren't meeting up to expectations you were kind of like dumped was it yeah yeah and also shun you know the shunning is a strong word but it is kind of like that if you weren't yeah. doing what you were supposed to do or producing what you were supposed to be producing whatever your job was in Scientology you you, you you're they kind of like turned away from you and there was this thing about um um, you know, if, if, if they were in, it, it was, I, I want to liken it to being with the cool kids in the cafeteria at high school. You could be invited to sit at the table with the cool kids, but then other times, you know, you were, you were kicked out and you were unable to. So yeah, there was a lot of like, dislike and, you know, in good graces and not in good graces that, and you said you weren't fierce enough. So did the role entail that you had to be quite fierce in your approach and getting people to find out? Yeah, I, I mean, I was pretty fierce, but yeah, I'm, I'm speaking about this one particular other person that kind of like 
um, um, moved me out of being third in command. Yeah. So in command, I use that term loosely because really, I, Harry and I were, ran the show. So you know, so I, I didn't really. I was just their loyal canine. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Really, I, I felt I felt like that. I, it took me a lot, uh, many years, to kind of realize their true feelings towards me. Right. Yeah. Which what did you feel that was? Do you feel that you were being used in order to bring money in? Oh God, yes. It was an agenda. Oh God. Yeah. Wasn't a yeah. love, if you like. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that must have been pretty hard to come to terms with because, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I thought that they were my friends. Yeah. Okay, so just um, going back to that again, you were saying, you've mentioned before, and we've had discussions about how people were kind of mad with you because obviously you're the one that's bringing in the money and pushing people to sign up for courses. But really, um, you were being kind of pushed from Harry and Avra. That's, is that correct? Yeah, and maybe in, in for a time, it could have been being pushed from the Church of Scientology, but, um, you know, the, the, the main Church of Scientology. But mostly it was Harry and Avra. They're, it, you know, I, I was told to get money. I needed to get money. Okay. Um, so... I mean, you had, you had a baby and you had, I think you were married at the time or you were mm -hmm. in a relationship. How did you find Harry and Ava's, um take on marriage and relationships and children in the home? Like, was it something they respected? Was it seems important? Well, I, I feel that they were really always, there was never two people in a marriage. There was the couple and then there was Harry and or Avra. And they were always involved one way or another, even when there were sessions and say one part of the couple would talk about their transgressions or they call, we called them overts then. Um, <clears throat> you know, Harry and Avro would know and they would sometimes um, recommend that people break up or people get together. And um, uh, someone told me recently that they had, Avra had told them to be on birth control pills so they wouldn't get pregnant. So I got pregnant. <laughs> uh, sadly, um, my, the first time I got pregnant, um, I miscarried. And uh, I did, then my husband and I got pregnant again. And um, I was lucky to be able to bring the baby to work with me, my daughter to work. There was another woman there who also had a baby four months before me. We both brought our children there. However, we didn't raise our children. You know, we were, you know, we were busy working all the time and other people's older children took care of our babies. So um, even though it appeared as though it was kid friendly, there was no way I could like leave some evening so that I could be home with my daughter. I couldn't. Right. I had to work. So the commitment yeah, I, was for work and children. Yeah, it was not for children. Right. Okay. Um, so you mentioned previously, I just want to go over this part because, again, a lot of people cannot understand why you would end up in that situation. You know, like it, it seems crazy to someone that's never been in this situation. Um, I mean, would you describe it? I know we've discussed this before as well, and, and it's discussed a lot by in, in you know, all the thousands of cults, not just Scientology or Avatar or any of those. Would you describe it as being a very slow process of indoctrination that led you further and further in before you knew it? You kind of like handed over your, your decision making without it seeming like you'd handed it over. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm not going to use this as an excuse, but I was very young. Yeah. I was really young. Um, <clears throat> I was 30 when I had my child, so I, there was no excuse then. But um, by that time, it was, you know, I was, I was in. So it happens very slowly. It's kind of like um, peeling an onion. You know, just things start, you know, being your own life is start, starts to get stripped away. And you have to be devoted on that. It's just, there's a story about, uh, you know, a frog being put in, into a pot of boiling water. He knows it's boiling, 
But if he's in a pot of water and the flame is really low and it just slowly gets to be boiling, the frog gets used to it. And that's what I likened it to. I just grew accustomed to it. Yeah, yeah. And I know from what I've researched, which really opened my eyes, is the whole process of thought reform and just what looking at um, how Avatar is set up, for example, and I imagine this in the way it's the same in cults, you wouldn't have a thought reform program, and how they sort of, throughout all the exercises, and you may not be aware of it, is how they break down the personality and rebuild it and break it down. And some of that's done through the love bombing as well, so bringing you in and moving you out. And so that, that is kind of comparable to an abusive relationship but they sort of reel you in and then you know you've done something bad and bang and so you know that that's just my my take and what i have learned that's part of the indoctrination process so I what I'm trying to tell you, sorry i'm getting over a cough so i'm getting over a cold so i'm coughing excuse that's me go ahead that's absolutely yeah. fine um you know the whole process is in a nine day course or a 14 day mm -hmm. course even a six month program you know you're slowly handing over your life and your psyche over years and, and, and some decades I mean you were, you were in for 12 years that's a long time to be dedicated right if they yeah if other people don't understand I don't know if it will make them understand any better but I couldn't understand it either how it happened to me yeah. I, I it took me years to come to terms with it yeah. you know yeah. So, and I think anybody who gets into a cult, um, you know, well, once they get out, they go, what the hell? Ha where, what, where did I go? You know, what did I do? How come? You know, there's a lot to, un you know, not understand. And sometimes you can't get answers. Oh, no, no, absolutely. And I, I only yeah. found that I have more because I've had to do this expo. So I've been absolutely absorbed in learning everything I can about mm -hmm. form and mind control. And I, I'm gobsmacked, you know, like, like yeah. the techniques that are used and just, you know, it's getting into your mind and understanding every single person and then it's just understanding how, you know, they break down the personality. They know how to do it, how to rebuild it up to conform to the cult. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Um, so throughout your time, before we get on to how things began to fall apart, throughout your time, what other sort of uh, abuses did you see? Because I know we discussed that you saw one in particular with a, a lady who was, you know, you said they were quite cool to her. And just did you see many others? Or was, you, was that kind of free more from your environment because i know everyone has different stories and saw different things and experienced different things yeah you know i think you know i could say oh this happened and this happened and i i, I don't know if i want to do that okay. i think what i want to say is that there was there was um a click it was very clickish yeah and um there was a higher echelon and a lower echelon and it, that in itself I think is abusive. Yeah. I think it's abusive in cheerleaders and I think it's abusive in uh, churches and organizations and um, who do that to control. Um, and so, and also, you know, cults and, organ you know, avatar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, Moving on to around the kind of like 1984, I imagine 1985 period when things started to change, I believe. Um, can you tell us a bit more about how things began to fall apart with regards to Harry and Scientology and the whole trademark um, issue and um, you setting? Oh, yeah, it's such a long story. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's very difficult to be able to give the whole picture in a short time. But um, Harry decided that he was going to start selling Scientology classes that we were not licensed to sell. And he decided to break off from the church in a way, but still offer the classes. Do you know what I mean? He had quit paying royalties to the, to the church. And um, I don't know how he got the classes. Somebody else probably in our uh, community could probably remind you or me of that. Um, and so we started selling advanced classes that we really shouldn't have um, to people in advance for thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. 
and I'm going to shorten this very long story. Um, somehow the church found out and Harry was kicked out of the church, but he continued to sell things. But I'm not sure how, but I think pressure got on him. Uh, and again, somebody else can probably remember. I can't remember the ins and outs. Um, uh, it took me a long time to try to forget all this stuff. Um, <laughs> um, so what he did was, you know, he went and he invested in a, a isolation tank, a deprivation tank. And he, start, he put it in his house and he started um, um, uh, floating. And he came up. It, one day he came uh, came into um, the mission and he said, wow, look at this. Uh, I, I came up with this thing called Avatar. And so he slowly started taking, you know, the people through, through the Avatar rundown. And he said, this is all you'll ever need is Avatar. This is all you'll ever need. And so, and everybody was going crazy, loving it. I mean, it really, it was, it was good. So um, then what happened was he made an announcement to everyone in the community who had money on account that the uh, Scientology ship sank. And with it, all of their money went. And people are like, what? Are you kidding? And there was a huge uproar, huge uproar and um and he just you know dug his heels in saying that there was no money he couldn't refund any any people any any people's money some people did um take him you know got, got lawyers and they were paid off at like pennies on the dollar it was re really ridiculous now what happened to the money yeah, because the money obviously hadn't gone to Scientology because he didn't have um, the authority right. to sell those courses. There was a right. Level. And P.S. and by the way, I was always encouraged to get cash. And there was a separate receipt box for cash. So, you know, money was a big deal. Okay, okay so, so I, I'll just say that. I don't, I don't need to, you know, pound that into the ground, but I think anybody, anybody, you can get the picture. Yeah. So um, um, people started being very, very upset, but they were excited about Avatar. And at first he was going to, Harry was going to charge people for Avatar. And then I guess some people were like, wait a minute, you have, you know, thousands of dollars of mine. Um, so somehow it worked out that some people paid for it, some people didn't. So um, my job was at that point was um, I started bringing people in from out of town uh, to take the Avatar course. So Avatar did start taking off. So there were still the transition between Scientology to Avatar. Yes, this is the yeah, this is the transition time. Yeah. So, um, and then um, I was challenged to, and I did it, to uh, get a, um, an avatar course going on the West Coast, which I did, uh, a couple in uh, Los Angeles and uh, one in San Diego. I mean, there were, you know, and my, my child was young, so I had to travel and be gone away from her for a while. So um, I don't know where else you want me to go with this. I mean, this is where the story, this is where the story gets really interesting. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's, it's uh, at home, you've, you know, at the time you've got the, the ship is um, sank and the money has gone and this is, you moved right. as your role into Avatar. Because not everyone did move into Avatar, did they? You had well, no. At that point, so, it's kind of going off, really. <laughs> Right. So there, there were a lot of people that were extremely upset because they couldn't, they couldn't get their money. Just like, and for the first time, people started talking, we, talking negatively about Harry and Avra was verboten. You could not do it. It was absolutely no way. And people started 
communicating with each other and going, what the hell just happened? He's got our money. Wow. So, he to to so he has to hear exactly, exactly. So, um, um, it's interesting as a side note, this is where I feel that, um, you know, sometimes the students become the teacher's teacher. Mm. And this was a perfect example, but Harry just refused to listen and to do the right thing by the people who were dedicated to him for decades. Dedicated, gave them their time, their money, everything, their, their dedication. And he could have, um, he could have done the right thing. Mm -hmm but he, he chose not to for the sake of money. And I will say that since this, in, in these decades, when people start finding, about, finding out about where Avatar comes from, um, Harry will shrug us off by saying that we are disgruntled ex-employees. Mm -hmm. And he's right, we certainly are, but we have really good reason. Yeah. He, he says it in such a way, in such a convincing way, that people don't dig any further. Yeah. And it is my, my, I encourage the avatars, people who are in it and people who are going into it, to keep questioning this, yeah. keep digging, find out where it came from, find out what, what, the, what the dark shadow is that it was born under, avatar. Not it, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, say, no, that's absolutely right. I mean, the whole not questioning. You, you kind of see it more when you're out, which is probably why I'm questioning like crazy the last six months because yeah. you have, you know, you have the right to question. But when you're in this cult, in in a cult like this, and like you were saying, the process of when you're beginning to think about questioning of what the uproar, that's not the case. I mean, it's a closed box. You just don't say anything. I mean, you just well to begin with, straight away, it's something to do with you. And I know that that was similar to, to you as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as you had like a thought or a question, then it come back to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is that he left a lot of people in great financial ruin. He, um, he dropped us, basically. We were his community. We would come to his talks. You know, we would you know, we, we, we loved him very much. We revered him. Stupid me. I will just talk about myself. But the thing is, is that he left a lot of supporters in financial ruin and, uh, you know, they were betrayed and they had a lot of problems that they had to sort out. And, um, you know, so he left, he, he left us all behind so that he could move forward with Avatar. Yeah, and then at this time, I mean, it was pretty serious. People were going bankrupt and divorcing yeah. and all sorts. Yeah, okay. yeah, there was all kinds of yeah, there was all kinds of stuff. So, okay, so um, I think we get the picture with that, <laughs> that part. Um, moving mm -hmm. in again, so you started running courses. It was in California. So tell us more about your role within Avatar, and also you had a process of waking up, really, didn't you? I mean, it wasn't just one yeah. thing, like. For all the files, so you know, that process of going back and coming out and going back and all sorts. So, so tell us about both those things, your role in Avatar and that process of what you began to, to wake up to what was happening. Yeah, there were a number of things that happened. And yeah, it's never just one thing. But I did, you know, the, 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 um, the veil started getting thinner for me and I started seeing more things about Harry and Avra. And, and I, I have to say that I still loved them, even though I saw their faults, you know, which I can talk about, but I'm not going to, because this is not going to be a slam. This is, uh, um, this is a, uh, a story or, or an explanation. So, you know, uh, where Avatar came from. So um, the, it happened when I was on my way again to California. I had to leave my daughter behind, and um, we were in an airport, and Harry said to me, do you know where I got the Avatar material? I said, no. And he said, I have a spaceship in my backyard. 
And now I believe in extraterrestrials and stuff like that, but it just seemed what hit me. And this is again, a person who was just starting to like let negative feelings come through. It really appeared to me like an egotistical exclamation. Um, so um, I was like, well, okay. And then um, we were in California, and my job was to get people, and I was also called into the classroom when, were, when they needed help um, as, a, as a trainer, although Harry uh, has uh, often uh, um, explained to people that I was never a trainer, although he did put me in the training position several times. Um, um, and... I called my friend back in the Elmira Mission who was still getting paid $75 a week. And um, uh, that was all that she was being paid while he was making, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on each avatar. Um, and she finally broke the spell for me and she said, I'm leaving. I think Harry is crazy. This is totally unfair what he's doing to the people that are, have been devoted to him, so I'm getting out. And it kind of broke, my, broke the spell. And I said, oh my God, I'm gonna leave too. All right, so yeah, you know. So what happened uh, a day later is they must have sensed something, my, my distance. Um, and uh, there were three of them, took me into my hotel room and kept me up all night explaining to me why what the, the breakdown in Elmira was because of me. And because, because I would tell, I, do, I divulged pri very private things about Harry and Avra to my, to my then husband. And he told other people, even though I told him not to, he, you know, so words started getting out. And so I guess in a way it was my fault, but um, you know, Anyway, um, so I, I felt like it was a brainwashing session, mm -hmm. and I, I ended up thinking, yep, it really is me. I mean, all night long. That is a classic cult move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you, um, yeah. you had the, the peer pressure as well, because you had another trainer involved in that, um, didn't you, in, in that session? Yes, yes. And, 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 and I'm a trainer. Exactly. And yeah. so anyway, and I'm making a really long, I mean, I could give all kinds of details. I just don't think it's worth it. If people really want to know, they can get in, in touch with me. Yeah. But, um, and so the next day, I was on my way to the classroom and one of the students who happened to be a psychiatrist, <clears throat> and he was not wild about Harry, but he, he kind of liked the avatar material. Um, took me aside and said, what's wrong? Because my eyes were like this from crying. And basically, he, he got it out of me and I told him what had happened. And he said, look it, you're brainwashed. Pretend everything is fine and that you're totally devoted and on board with them. And then the minute you get home, which was going to be seven or 10 days later, the minute you get home, get out. And so that's what I did. He checked in with me all the time. I really owe him. He really, he, he really, you know, he really got my feet on the ground. So, um, so I left. And shortly thereafter, um, I guess I, you know, the entire community, there were, there were things happening, lawsuits, you know, trying to get back pay from Harry, um, you know, testifying against him and people trying to sue him. And he just had a lot more money than, than we did. So, you know, he would pay pennies on the dollar yeah. for the few people who did get something. And then there were all those newspaper articles. Yeah. Yeah. So the newspaper articles where, um, I mean, we've got them up on the internet now that they've been um, on the internet, but not in their pure form that you have provided. So we have like right. all the originals up there. So that's really revealing. And I just want to say, I know they helped me a lot. I read them oh, 
way before I even was looking at these expos, I've actually had reported Avatar to a cult um, organization and at the time, and it, it woke me up to what happened. Like that's what's so valuable about your story and everyone's stories and, and researching because I could identify things that had happened mm -hmm. with me and things that I had observed and it just began to click. You know how, you, that, how that can happen. So they're really valuable. So, you know, thank you for providing the originals to you. Um, I think now for that. So, I mean, was it something you wanted to say? Yeah, I wanted to say something that is in the newspaper articles that happened right at the end. <clears throat> and that was, oh, excuse me, it's probably really loud in the microphone. Um, um, I received a letter. Um, and I think it was close to the last day of the newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, when we were in Scientology, we had to write down our transgressions in our own handwriting. This was before computers. And um, we had to hand them in. And I received a letter with copies of my transgressions that I wrote that were embarrassing with a note that said, quit talking about Harry Palmer like this or something like that it's uh, it's in the newspaper article yeah and I was like oh. so I called the police and they sent over a detective and they looked at my w-2 form which I happened to have and the typing was the detective goes huh and he compared the two and he said huh from the same just from his eyesight he could tell that it was the same typewriter mm -hmm. I said this to Ter Harry, and Harry said, oh my God, somebody came into my house and used my typewriter, which is bullshit, because he had all my records. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, how did you, you know that letter? I mean, that's quite, you know. Well, I mean, how would anybody, how would anybody feel, feel about that? I mean, my God, you know, I, I was young, I was stupid, I admitted it. And he was using what I told him he was supposed to be a minister in the Church of Scientology. Gosh. You know, and he used this stuff against me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, come on. So, anyway, I guess the thing that I want to say is that Harry should admit, admit to his transgressions. Mm he really should admit to his transgressions and he has plenty and imagine and if he were to make amends or do whatever you know do some make some kind of restitution to those in Elmira who he really even on an apology let's not you know I mean restitution would be really good yeah you know but an apology instead of blaming us you know, that's what I think any good leader would do. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's how you can go. I mean, the thing is, is that when we're in these groups, we can't see it because we've moved into that, sh that subtle kind of indoctrination. So before you know it, you know, everything does come back to you as your transgression. But when you're out of it and you're looking at it from an outsider like we do now, you can just see how unethical it is and how it's far from being conscious. or in Right. As an organization it, too, not just as individuals, but as an organization, there should be some form of transparency and, um, you know, right. integrity. Well, what I understand now, and I don't know all about Avatar now, I, it's really fallen off my radar. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm much better not having anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah. However, what from the conversations that I've been having from people who have been in it, it sounds like it has become, it's modeled on the Scientology organization. There's higher echelons, there's more classes, there's more things that you have to pay them for, you have to pay them royalties, or maybe not royalty intern fees. I mean, it just sounds like this is a very money motivated organization. Yeah. And that is exactly the way Scientology is. 
And you've so, got a hierarchy in Scientology that we have as well in Avatar, which has been kept hidden. Um, you yeah. know, you have those the secret in the layers and, and the fact that, you know, your, your staff sound very much like what our QMs and, and trainers are, you know, QMs and trainers, mm -hmm. the type of role that you carried out and just, again, how you the whole part of transgressions what we also call hidden agendas which is worse than transgressions in our class we have two lots <laughs> oh yeah it sounds so scientology like it's not funny i mean you know and, and then the and then the um you know that you have to write them up oh yeah well watch out what you write up I, I you know, look that. what happened to me <laughs> i've learned that and i know this is a risk doing this expose but i think you know um it's worth the risk because mm -hmm. that starts happening then it just shows them for who they are because they right. confidential information and i can right yeah um I, I don't think harry and ever are totally bad yeah yeah I, I think that they're just incredibly money motivated yeah. which makes which may and i i'd i mean let me let me ask you something if somebody cannot afford avatar do they give you a discount no absolutely not no, no we're, we're, we're coerced into getting loans we're coerced into borrowing money of avatar masters there's been mm -hmm. created a pool of avatar masters that then loan money on behalf of the organization rather than the organization loaning money so the organization never loans money and so i know for mine i just clocked mine up yesterday it was thirty eight thousand in 14 months and some of and some of that i take some responsibility for because i wanted to progress on the path but the first three courses and internship it was it was coercion it was undue influence and usually when the students under an altered state of consciousness which is the part i you know i don't like about avatar is that when you're in that you know that real stage someone dives in and will sell you onto the master's course and then you'll be sold on to the pro course and then you'll be sold on to the wizard's course and then you'll have internships before that and then before you know it you're in the intern advanced program and you get the picture it just goes on and on and on and um i think any any avatar master will admit that that's one of the biggest concerns about this organization is how people that have no money or are unemployed even are being loaned money of you know 10 grand a course even and, and hotel fees so yeah which again sounds very similar to um how it, it worked in Omira in terms of your permission exactly and you know there's many roads to, uh, there's many there's many paths to enlightenment you don't have to take avatar mm -hmm. a lot of it has come from buddhism harry has has taken teachings from buddhism and is profiting and um you know if if any other self-help uh organizations who truly want to help you they won't leave you in the dust if you can't afford it they won't dismiss you if you can't afford it. They won't urge you to go take out a loan for them. Yeah. Yeah. Or, and break up relationships and partnerships and friendships mm -hmm. if you can't afford it, you know. Right. Um, so, I mean, as I, I don't even say the question, do you feel it's about money for them? Because I think that's just been answered throughout our conversation, really. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose why... I, I'm looking at that again is because the whole facade is presented as though money is not important and avatar masters are expected to take that philosophy on board and struggle and have no money and no from from some of them no no clothing and nothing <laughs> um in order mm -hmm. to commit to the cause you know when I say no clothing I mean you know yeah I know you know new clothes yeah right yeah and yet uh, and Harry Palmer gives that impression that he he does the same, and even Avra, in terms of that's that's what part of creating an enlightened planet is that it's not mm -hmm. materialistic. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, do you have any views on that? I mean, I know you can't really say at this current time, but when you, back in in the Amira mission days, did you find that it was about more about money for them? Um, uh, absolutely <laughs> and it sounds like why the, the way that they have it structured now it still is yeah here they can say oh it's not about money it's not about money but come on look at the actions yeah, look yeah. at the people who are going in debt look at the people who they are sending to banks and individuals to get loans yeah. to do who benefits yeah. who benefits financially 
And if it wasn't about finances, then Harry would offer deep discounts. Yeah. He would give it to people who, who can't afford it. What is it? Is it only going to be for the rich? Yeah. And even then, it's not for the rich because, I mean, I know I had no money when I walked into Avatar. We could barely pay our mortgage. And um, I didn't want to do the Avatar, of course, at that particular time. And I was made, you know, it was coercion into doing it. And, um, and, and they know that. <laughs> But, and I, but you you had a way to get money. I had I it's had to borrow people who have, yeah borrow, right. So and I borrowed bank <clears throat> and I borrowed money of Avatar Masters to go to Avatar Masters and then another one of an Avatar Master to go to the professional course. And I mean it was a mess. And you can imagine my partner at the time just was and he had nothing against me doing Avatar. So he actually wanted to do it with me, but there was such a pressure to do the next course rather than wait three to six months until we had saved the money. And I suppose why I'm saying this story is that this is very common. This is more common than not common within right. within the network. It's very Scientology. It's the same it's the same MO is that they had in um, uh, Scientology. Yeah. Sadly. No, yeah. And I understand that uh, Harry is calling one of the levels or he's he's telling people that one level is a bodhisattva level, which they I find else to be that way as they get further up, yeah, towards higher. That to me is such a sacrilege for him saying that because a true bodhisattva puts other people before themselves, mm. and he is not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just not doing that. And if if he really is a bodhisattva, he would take care of the broken hearts that he left in Elmira. Yeah. I mean, we're all scattered. It's been, you know, decades, but he could do something. And so I say that if, if, if anybody listening to this asks Harry about um, what happened in Elmira, see if he dismisses it. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose that there's that whole doctrination in Avatar, and I don't know how much you know about that, that everything is our personal responsibility. So what even he has done would be come back to us as being our responsibility and how we kind of like perceive it, say. I, I, I can't remember exactly how to present it because like you, I have tried to block out a lot of my memory and it's, yeah. out of it, it's such a, you know, I don't want to use that word, but it's so like, Wow, oh, crikey, did I believe that when I was in there? How can that be my responsibility? But when you're in there, you believe that even just asking that it is, it's weird. I, Thinking about it. I, <laughs> I'm really not into calling him any kinds of names, but it is very sociopathic behavior. Yeah. So I'll just say that. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll leave it at that part as well. <laughs> Good. Um, because mm -hmm. same here, you know, I hate that. I mean, that's what I think kept me from speaking out for so long. And, and we don't like it. It doesn't, it's not something, you know, you go to bed with and you're loving it. It's, it's horrible. It's, um, it makes you feel pretty awful having to revisit all of this and hear people's stories and learn the true intentions of those that you believed were actually wanting to make a difference. It's not a nice feeling at all. I mean, it's... I can think of better things to do, but also I think it's really important to to stand up to to those that have bullied and bring the truth to the surface, and also turn around from me perspective and, and me personally, and help just bring that truth to others, so that if they do leave, they can they can see it for what it is. Because I, I found as well from those I've spoke to who have left, and myself and leaving, I think the process could have been a lot better if I could have I could have had somewhere to go to see exactly what I had been through and that others had been through the same. So it's, it's not just about, um, it's, it's not just about, God, anything in particular. I'm trying, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. It's not a personal dig. It's not an attack. It's not just about pulling down their organisation. It's about also providing information support for those that are considering leaving, have left. So they're not blaming themselves all the time or thinking it's because they've got a hidden agenda, like see it for what it is. This is what it is. You know, yes, we had some personal responsibility for getting involved, but this is what it is. Look past the facade and then learn mm -hmm. the techniques and protect yourself next time because there are like approximately 3,000 other cults 
of a similar nature working within the US and Australia. So mm -hmm. we also need to like, not, I mean, I've nearly fallen into others, I'll be perfectly honest, over the last two years looking for help and support. Not now, because I, you know, long story, but I, I educated myself. So it's also about protecting ourselves for the future too. And about yeah. understanding that um, not everyone has your best intentions at heart and it doesn't matter how they present it. it they don't. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if the money is the focus, you, you know, even though they say, oh, we want to help everybody. We want to help the world. Everybody wants to help the world. And that is very, that can easily be the hook that they bring you in because you have a good intention. You do want to help people. Absolutely. You know, we, we do share that. Yeah. You just don't have to spend thousands of dollars to do it. You know, there's other things. There's other, other paths. If, yes. if people want to know other paths, they can ask me. And I think even though if we consider the concept that, which I know Harry Palmer uses, that money's not a bad thing and it's okay to have wealth, that's fine too. But then mm -hmm. put that into action because from where I was sitting, I, I can't, probably one avatar master I remember bought loads of students and had money. And I would say that was because he had a network marketing background. All the others were struggling all the time I struggled all the time so therefore there is a, a faulty multi-level marketing structure in place that needs to be looked at from the organization not then sent back to the masters being because it's their hidden agenda or transgression or there's a creation they haven't dealt with or some mm -hmm. out issue so um, what I'm saying is that yeah it's, even if we look at the fact that money isn't important then <laughs> Make it fair for people so that they can earn something from taking students through the courses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we could talk for ages about this, Margie. So, I mean, that's been fantastic. Thank you so much for taking your time. I know it's going to oh, be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I know it's yeah. Not be, um, and is there anything you wanted to say to those that may be listening? I know you said that you'll be available to answer questions with people. Yeah, if somebody wants to, they can, um, you know, you, they can contact you and you can let me know. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> um, I know any, uh, I, I know that there's a lot of people who do speak out against Harry, get a lot of hate mail and, you know, they get some trolls and, and um, I'm just, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I welcome all communication, but I'm not going to take any bullshit. <laughs> so uh yeah so oh, that's what you know you get good things out of everything and one good thing that i got out of um my scientology and avatar experience is i really i really got a wonderful bullshit detector <laughs> so so that's that's my that's my um that's the plus out of all this Absolutely. No, the same yeah. too. The same too. And I think, again, having social media and these platforms, there's so many people speaking up now about cults like Scientology and so many others that we begin to learn their tactics and we see them for what they are. So um, all that does really is show the organisation for mm -hmm. who they are when we, we do get a response like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, okay. So anything else before we... End? Thank you for doing what you're doing. That's my pleasure. Yeah, all righty. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, you bet. Bye-bye now. Bye.